Hi everyone, Ailish reporting here from day one on virtual CND. Today I was attending the plenary session, so this was the general debate where government delegations make these carefully curated statements, uh, often quite diluted by diplomatic language, where they discuss sort of some issues which are important to them. So the EU and EU member states often discuss the need to abolish the death penalty. Uh, which is obviously very important and, and quite controversial sometimes within the context of CND with um, certain government delegations who enforce the death penalty present. Apart from that, there isn't much of note happening in these uh, general debates. Sometimes there's some mildly positive things said, mostly there's some quite negative things said by some of the more war on drugs uh, governments and often there's very little about young people said outside of the scope of the need to protect children and, and adolescents mostly. My name is Maria and I attended an event uh, about synthetic drugs and why we need to worry about them. Uh, the main points of the event were uh, an overview of the trends right now in the global synthetic drugs market the experience of countries uh, in Europe and of North America in, in the field of uh, synthetic drugs. Uh, the, the participants also talked about uh, the innovations and the, how the market is very efficient in finding and utilizing opportunities. Uh, the event was very informative, although no mention of youth in any context. Uh, in, in general, I found the event very helpful and informative, a lot of new, useful information. And I attended an event dedicated to the anniversary of the 1961 uh, convention and the anniversary of an agreement between UNODC and Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Uh, the main points of the event were uh, speeches made by the country's representatives, countries members of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Uh, so the main points were uh, to strengthen the cooperation between the countries in the field of combating uh, traffic of illicit drugs. There was also a mention of possibly plans to open uh, a center to fight drugs trafficking in Tajikistan. There were, there were no mentions of youth in any context, and in general, it felt very dehumanizing to drug users. Uh, a lot of problematic language was used. Hi everyone, um, I'm Ruby Lawler. So for day one of CND, uh, the first side event I attended was on alternative development. Uh, it was titled Opportunities and Challenges in the Role of Development in Drug Control Policies. Um, and it was an interesting discussion. There was not a lot of discussion about actual um, drug crops, mostly about how um, crop cultivation um, and deforestation as a result of um, growing, growing cocoa and things like that is happening and how that alternative development needs to be at the heart of any drug control policy, um, which was an interesting idea. I have been having studied international development myself, but um, there was not a lot of a kind of in-depth discussion onto why, um, onto why alternative development is so important for um, human rights, for um, ensuring people aren't left behind. And there was, it was a quite a missed opportunity where they could have discussed how um, the sustainable development goals won't be achievable um, if the war on drugs continues at the rate it is. So it was um, a bit of a missed opportunity. I was a bit disappointed by it. And there was pretty much no mention of youth at all. Um, yeah, that was that event. So I attended a human rights um, event, a side event, run by the Pompidou Group. Um, and it was basically a discussion about where the Pompidou Group came from, uh, all of their projects and everything they've been involved in. And then there was a few mentions of this self-assessment tool that they're developing for um, countries to self-assess whether they are in line with the human rights conventions while um, implementing and developing their drug policies, which is an interesting concept, 
but um, as earlier raised in the in the side event, someone they were talking about how a lot of countries don't declare the human rights abuses that they um, partake in, and they deny them when they are brought to their attention. But the like when the Human Rights Watch kind of notes things that are happening. Um, and so I, I pointed out that they might not be able to get truthful answers out of the countries in this self-assessment tool and what are they going to do to make sure that they actually are, are recording real data and not just what the countries want to give them. And their answer to that was basically that they can't really police it and they just hoped that they would build up trust. Um, but no mention of youth in this, um, in this panel at all. But uh, it was still somewhat interesting and I look forward to seeing what the self-assessment tool will look like. I was lucky enough to attend side events of uh, Commission on Narcotic Drugs uh, where the session titled Drugs, COVID and Marginalizations organized by International Doctors for a Healthier Drug Policy. And I was lucky enough to uh, get information regarding the COVID-19 pandemic impacts on drug use drug treatment and drug policy among three different countries, uh, US, uh, Zimbabwe, and India, where lots of discussions and uh, flagged out issues was made, where uh, in Zimbabwe, there was uh, psychoactive drugs rising issues among youth, and there was a rise in gender violence also in uh, India, there was during the time of lockdown, uh, lots of uh, drug users was shifting into alcohol and there was also um, discussed about the take home methadone dose and mobile home methadone service in Delhi. And uh, in U.S., uh, Cassandra Freddie Quick uh, from Drug Policy Alliance uh, discussed and highlighted about uh, the overdose death during the without PPE uh, to find people to give information and sterile equipment, uh, in especially in uh, New York. Also, uh, there was one fascinating quote made by Cassandra uh, that uh, <clears throat> in the US uh, there is a lot of overdose death and what she highlighted and what she quoted uh, was uh, every overdose death are preventable which was a nice quote made by her and I was uh, lucky enough to get lots and lots of information from this event and it was quite informative for us all attendees. Thank you. I attended the sessions uh, titled We are the Evidence Community-Led Responses on Recriminalization COVID-19 and Harm Reduction uh, which was organized by HIV Legal Network uh, along with input and UNH, uh, where the session started uh, with the opening remarks from Executive Director of Input, Ms. Judy Chang, and followed by the presentations of Input Report on Decriminalization. And there was also a Norwegian Ministry of Health and Care Services focal person, Senior Drug Policy Advisor, where he presented about the civil society engagement as well as uh, there was also Laurel Sprague Special Advisor Community Mobilizations from UNH where she presented about the uh, Global AIDS Strategy <coughs> 21 to 26 and it was quite an informative uh, event uh, where I get to know about lots and lots of information regarding decriminalizations uh, COVID-19 and harm reduction linkages. Thank you.